finished up this Gretsch. Um, stick around and thanks for subscribing and tuning in. Um, this one had a neck reset and a fret job as well as a lot of repair around the binding. Um, neat thing I wanted to show you real quick before I rewind the tape and show you from the start all the repair work is that this tone circuit right here. This is um, with no tone knob, uh, basically with the treble on full. This one you get a little cut in a nice place too. And then this one, a little bit darker maybe for a jazz tone. So stick around and watch. Thanks for tuning in. It's a 1965 Gretsch double anniversary model 6117. It came in with uh, the bridge lowered all the way down to about, I don't know, 5 eighths, 3 quarters of an inch off the top. It really needs to be about 1 inch off the top. And when I set it up that way, the uh, string action was quite high. It was actually 12 64ths at the 12th fret, which is three times higher than I usually want it on an electric guitar. <clears throat> so, look at those babies. This is only being held together by magnetism. There was a little piece of wood on the bottom side. I haven't figured out where that went exactly yet. It was glued on somehow. Over here, this one has two pieces of wood. Wood is good. The truss rod was maxed out and the uh, neck was not straight whatsoever. It's pretty up bowed. So I got that cleaned up. Got the truss, truss nut loose. I can turn it with one finger right now. But I'm going to clamp up this neck and take the frets out. I'm going to pull the neck. There's a bolt on the bottom, which I can't show you until I get the electronics out of here. Well, the office is a little messy right now. <clears throat> there was two of these little junctions floating around inside. <clears throat> they weren't uh, connected or attached to anything really. should be able to pull the stuff through. The bridge pickup. Here's the double anniversary. Fret's out. I'm going to check and see about sanding this fretboard a little bit. And figuring out how to back this screw out. Yes, it has a, a plug. And so i got to get that out. And then I can heat the joint and take the neck off.
Nice neck. Okay. Let's see about filling this. Try to pack this in there. We can melt it. Before I take the neck off, <clears throat> I want to sand this fingerboard because after I take the neck off, I won't, there won't be anything to hold the fingerboard in place. It was uh, measuring really kind of flatter than 12 inch radius on the top of the neck and then it was like a smaller radius up here. So you see is the sanding marks in the middle over here and then the sanding marks on the edges here. I'm going to try to get more of a uniform 12 happening. I also dropped in a little super glue along some spots that were... I want to go heavy on the first fret also because this neck has a really bad up bow. And, um, Going a little heavy right here on the first fret will help the up bow. It'll help tame the up bow. Okay, so that's 120 grit. I'll switch to 180 in a second. The other thing I did was uh, drilled a couple holes here to um, make sure that I found the pocket where the dovetail sits. I My first attempt I didn't quite hit it and this, uh, this neck is just joined to the body in a little different fashion than what I'm used to. It really goes off in this direction down here. Uh, it's not, you know, perpendicular to the fretboard. It's more like this. So on that last attempt there, I, I angled the drill bit back a little bit and I nailed it. So the, this is just a D string. I can really see that I found the pocket right there. Um, this first hole I drilled not so much. I think I was angled straight down or maybe even back that way a little bit too much. Alright, now I'm going to switch to 180 grit. stuck on here. Should be a pretty piece of rosewood. This is a 1965, I think. Oh my. Has a lot of sawdust. I 
I might collect this and save it for filling some pores and things. Let's save this dust. I got a little baggie full of this stuff already, but I might as well collect it while I got a clean source of it. I'll go grab the vacuum cleaner. That's after 400 grit and she's really shaping up to be a beautiful piece of rosewood. I'm not going to say it's a perfect piece of rosewood because there is no such thing as perfect. Drill some holes. I'm going to start off with a little pilot hole with my 564th bit that I was using for um, I was using this drill bit to try to find the dovetail pocket. This is a really good drill bit though. I I don't have too many 564 bits. Let's see here. Got a bunch of these. I think there's like an eighth inch bit. And I've already yeah, I've already hit the metal. So this this is only about uh, three sixteenths deep, that little plug. Very um, very shallow. This is a half inch Forstner's bit and I'm not con too concerned about dull making it dull. I have a whole second set of these bits. I'm a little nervous about screwing it up. Go in reverse. I think it's going to jump around. I got it cleaned up all right. Now I say a prayer. It's turning. It's probably just a big old wood screw. get a bigger screwdriver here. Golly. It's only been 55, 56 years since the screw came out of this wood here. Uh, and thank God it's coming out. Could you imagine that thing breaking off? That's why I was real careful to chip all the wood and glue away from it before I even attempted to back it out. Now this probably isn't holding the neck on. There's glue in the dovetail joint that holds the neck on. Oops! There it went. Bye bye screw. So here's the steamer. It's just the type of steamer that you would steam clean with. It doesn't stay on constant. You have to press this button. And a lot of water comes out at first. Alright. Got my steam going. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put it right here in the hole. 
make sure it's all the way deep. Pull it back a little. And watch the steam coming out the screw hole. That's a lot of steam. So I'm going to take a skewer or a dowel of some kind and plug that. Make sure there's no water dripping. Now I've got the plug, or the hole plugged up. I've got my steam working. I like to feel the heel. And um, I'm not going to start wiggling anything around until I feel the heel get warm. This is some good steam. Pull it out an inch. Trying to get some wiggle motion out of the neck. I got the Stumac jig happening now with a little pressure from the screw. And I've still got some steam going on here. Some blushing going on with the lacquer right now too. It might go away tomorrow. Sometimes I back the screw. I loosen it. And I'll let it rest. And finally, I got her off. Oh my gosh. That took a while. And it was really glued. They glued the uh, heel down onto the top here, which was completely crazy. I don't know. I'm a bit nervous right now. My nerves are shot. My nerves! See all the blushing that happens on the paint? All this glue. I can work all this glue off right now. Now, this blushing might go away on its own or I might have to polish it out but it's it's a lot it's not that big of a deal as it looks it looks ridiculous it? so here's the heel here's the um, dovetail it's split in half which is fixable I'm gonna get this glue off right now while it's warm So yeah, I've got some finish work to do on this anyways, so that crack is, you know, the least of my worries. The biggest worry was just getting it off and it was, man, it was rough. So, so here's a little note to self. They use a lot of glue on the body to the heel area right here on these cheeks. I mean, look at all this glue coming off here. Sorry for the animation in my voice but having known this I would have uh, gone in like with a razor blade through the sides and kind of tried to chip away uh, in between the body and the and the cheeks I think they call them cheeks but a little glue cleanup so high glue
Okay, here's my setup to coerce this neck to go back together. Um, fancy little MDF blocks cut on a slant. Two clamps and a heat lamp. And uh, since I cleaned off the, this is the end grain of the wood right here on this end, I'll keep more, um, spraying with my sprayer. Just uh, keeping a little moisture on there. Hopefully it wicks into the end grain and uh, with a little bit of heat over a period of an hour or so, maybe I'll get that to go back together and then uh, let it cool and uh, glue it the next day. Gotta sharpen them chisels once in a while. Came up with this little jig that works okay for me for, um, I guess it'd be the treble side I have a hard time with because I'm right handed. If I was left handed, I'd have a problem doing the bass side. So I can, there's cork on here so I can flip it. I can flip it this way and do the, the bass side. For this neck reset, I'm taking one millimeter off the heel. I'm going to undercut some more. to do. Yeah, I'm going to put a I'm going to shim both sides all the way, the full length. I'm going to shim the full length both sides and then I'll probably add a second shim just towards the bottom of the heel. And I will use the next shim material from Stumac. It is half a millimeter thick. Pretty thin. In the future when I do this, what I want to do, what I did, what my mistake was is that I noticed that the heel was 
you know, kind of back this way. So I set my needle back that way, which was not a good idea. Actually, I should have kept the needle perpendicular to the fretboard. And I went in too far. I can't remember which hole I was putting the steam in, but I was putting the steam in towards the middle too much. I want to make sure that I'm a, about a quarter inch, maybe three-eighths of an inch in on either side. And nowhere in the middle, especially on a neck like this, this is a, you know, this is a three-piece neck. It's got that laminated piece, and I delaminated it because I had so much steam going on in the middle, and I didn't realize that they put all that glue here uh, around the outside, which normally you don't see, but in this case there was tons of glue, and it, and it was holding the neck on much longer than normal, which caused uh, the this to delaminate and, and warp even worse, but. I did manage to get it glued back together and, you know, lesson learned, hopefully, I won't forget to be a little more mindful of um, the steam, the construction of these arch tops, and this is going to, I'm going to make a new one, that's where the little bolt went, crazy stuff. I'm going to give this a go. A little bit of fish glue. I thought about putting a little here. Just around the edge. A little bit more. I'm not going to go crazy on the face of the heel like they did over at Gretsch. Crazy people. Just a little bit here and there. And I'll paint some on the the dovetail. Let's see here. Make sure we get a little glue here and a little glue there. And I think that'll do. bit on that face right there. And that's about it. Just one clamp. I've been I've been using this one and it seems to hold it good. Just one clamp will do her. That's about all she wrote there. Just that one clamp. There's um, I can stick like a four thousandths of an inch feeler gauge right there. That's why I wanted to put a little glue right there. But other than that, there's supposed to be a gap over the extension. held down nice and tight here on the end. I'm going to be putting a new heel cap on there that will cover up any sloppy joint. I've got that little bit to work on also. Lacquer touch-ups and whatnot. There's a little gap on the fingerboard um, where it meets the uh, spacer. Isn't the end of the world, it doesn't seem. Alright. Well, i got some new frets going on here. But this first fret is a zero fret. So, um, first thing I want to do is I put tape on either side of the slot. 
and dropped in a little super glue down there so that this fret will sit proud. I also had to uh, nip it and pull the tangs off, the barbs off with the uh, fret barber. Get it so that I can pull it, pull it out if I need to. I always take the little refret saw saw that in there. I'm going to take the uh, you know, nut saw, clean this up just a smidge. Before I go committing 100% to where all this the screw holes for the Bigsby goes, I'm going to tie on some dental floss. Right here I can see by using this dental floss uh, exactly where I want to place the Bigsby. And once I figure out exactly where that's going to be, tap a little, little spot there for that screw. little spot for that screw. I'll just start drilling some holes. I like to start by drill, drill in reverse. chamfer these these holes make sure the lacquer doesn't chip out on each screw. Well, it's just a little easier to work with the thing upside down here. We're making our own rules today. Hope the Gretsch police aren't looking. Oh, I hope they're not checking in on this video.
so much easier. It's very nice. Very nice indeed. It's quite lovely. When I'm stringing up a big Bigsby, I always um, take the string and bend, in, bend it into like a little fish hook first. I pull it through the down bar and I wrap it around the little thingy and then I pull it on up. Boy oh boy. Got the electronics back inside. And we got the frets polished. level crowned and polished. Let's see what that rosewood looks like after all these years. All these years. Looks pretty nice. It looks pretty pretty darn nice. We can get that Dunlop flowing. Just get the Dunlop flowing. Boy, I'll be glad to be done with this. Other thing is, I had to go around all the binding, kind of melt it back together. It was cracked and crumbly, and then uh, stain it like a vintage amber color. So, it was all cracked up. Lots of cracks, but now it's... I got a little uh, brown-black shellac with a, I guess like a Scotia red. Just kind of dropping it in here. right here is I had to make a new heel cap and I took a fresh razor blade and put on my headband magnification and uh, drew out some real you know mummified lines I'm trying to make this look antiqued and old I've got a little a little bit of shellac that's been uh, tinted and I'm just gonna it's real thin too. It's it's watered down, not watered down, but it's uh, thinned with alcohol to make it look. Um, well, anyways, to make, to let it seep down into all those little cracks. After that dries, I'm going to go over it with uh, acetone and vintage amber to give it a more yellow look overall, and that should be good enough for a vintage heel cap replacement. The other one broke right in half. I don't know where it is, but it's somewhere around here. Here's the acetone with the vintage amber stain trick. I had to do this all the way around the binding because um, I had to fill in the binding in places pretty much um, all the way around the whole guitar. I had to fill the binding with um, melted plastic and acetone to... I don't know if I filmed any of that. 
But anyways, you can see I've taped this down to the board. I'm going to try to get this acetone to seep in there. That looks that looks like the mummy. Nice. Very nice. Oh yeah, he's gonna like that. Most guys wouldn't even notice something like this, but where is the old one? Get ready to put this cap on. Backside is kind of uh, scuffed up with 80 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna use bind all binding glue, which is an all-purpose thing. Well, I, I wouldn't say all-purpose, but let me show you what I did yesterday. Oh, you can't see it because it's under the pit guard now. Well, one of the corners of the uh, pit guard bezel, I don't know what you call that, pit guard ring, pickup, pickup ring. This really doesn't do anything, any function. It just covers the area. Um, it had, well, the corner had fallen off, and um, I used the bind all to glue it back together. And I guess it really didn't matter that much because now it's completely under the pit guard, but. Um, Oh, there it comes. If this stuff starts shooting out, you better be ready to use it. And uh, you probably don't want a whole bunch to squeeze out. This stuff will melt a lacquer and it will dissolve the the heel cap right into the wood. See that squeeze out? I don't want to touch that just yet. I might not even want to use any kind of tape to hold this down today because this color is all brand new and it doesn't have a clear coat over it yet. Um, in a few hours, when I feel that's good and dry and I can kind of chip that stuff off there, I'll take it down and spray it. You can see the cap and the paint that's covering it there, I hope. Maybe not. But we're making progress today. This might be finished by the end of the day. I'm going to shoot clear satin lacquer in this area. I don't think it's gonna, you know, I don't want to wait another week or two, polish and buff it out to a shine. I'm gonna shoot clear satin and be done with it. There's not too much glare. Um, it didn't fit exactly. It was a little bit bigger than the heel, so I took a razor blade and just used my thumbnail as a guide and uh, trimmed it. That left me with a real white looking spot so now I'm going to take the acetone q-tip again and make it yellow. And now I should be able to mask it off and spray. That's after three coats of um, satin. Clear satin lacquer. See how I have it all taped off. I use uh, stretch wrap and masking tape and I get it all so that nothing's exposed that doesn't need to be sprayed. Everything's all covered up. But yeah, it takes more time to prep and do the tape off than it does to actually do the spray. <laughs> Spraying's just a couple little chit 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 quick coats. Well, that's it.